There are 847 billionaires living in Europe today. Just like billionaires all over the world, they love to blow it all on houses, classic art, and some pretty weird hobbies. So naturally, let's start with the current goat of Europe. That would be my man Bernard Arnault. He's the richest man in all of Europe with a staggering net worth of $189.1 billion. Just to put that in perspective, poor Bill Gates is only worth $130 billion. He is the chairman and chief executive of the one and only Louis Vuitton. They're the guys that sell the likes of $2.1 million teddy bears, pumpkin jewel bags worth $130,000, or Richelieu men's shoes worth $10,000. So when you're the guy who literally creates fine taste for a living, clearly you're not allowed to shop at Ikea. Let's start with his multi-million dollar real estate. His chateau is a 150 year old castle surrounded by a vineyard on all sides. It is a beautiful space even by 150 year old castle standards. This property covers 41 hectares and provides wine worth $600 a bottle. The luxurious space was purchased by him and a Belgian partner for 175.4 million way back in 98. While that's a pretty big price tag, once you look at the place, I'm thinking they got a deal. He has also dropped significant amounts of money into Saint-Tropez, France. He has a lovely home there in a neighborhood with a typical price tag of over $20 million. These villas are the perfect combination of classic meets modern. They have old Europe style architecture with all the amenities and enormous pools modern socialites expect. What you really want these places for is that ocean view. You just cannot get a better look at that great blue ocean water like a French villa. Not only has he bought this luxury home there, but he's also invested heavily into the town itself. He has spent millions making what used to be a quaint spot into a boutique location that he is building to attract celebrity guests. Considering the fact that Leo DiCaprio, Beyonce, Bono, and Samuel L. Jackson have all summered there recently, I'd say his investments have paid off. It's obviously not enough that this man has an expensive chateau and is remaking a French village in his own image. If you walk into one of his extremely private homes, you'd be devastated if classic artwork wasn't decorating the walls. Don't worry, you won't be disappointed. Apparently he has a well-known rivalry in the art world with another luxury brand manager and top 20 art collector. His rivalry with Francois Pinel is known as the Handbag Wars. They will frequently bid tens to hundreds of millions against each other for both newer artists and classic ones like Monet. Not only that, but the man has dropped hundreds of millions on the restoration of Notre Dame as well. I bet I know what his favorite Disney movie is. If that wasn't enough, he also purchased a 70 meter long yacht known as Amadeus for a rumored $70 million. It has marble floors, six cabins, a gym, a golf track, and probably one of those turbines from the Avengers to make it fly. Then there's Amancio Ortega who gives pretty much every rich guy I've ever covered on this channel a run for their incredible amounts of money. He's the richest man in Spain and that's not for lack of trying to spend that fortune of his. The man has amassed $79 billion after founding the Inditex fashion group and Zara clothing line. Despite his efforts to remain a private person, there's just no hiding some of his more high profile purchases. I think you'll find that for European billionaires, Everything is about real estate. That goes double for Ortega. His holding company owns $17 billion worth of property. I mean, Amancio, how are you supposed to pretend you're a private guy when you bought the tallest tower in Miami? There are few cities in America less subtle than Miami, and the Panorama Tower stretches through 868 feet of its skyline. That makes it one of the top 100 tallest towers in America. It cost him $500 million to buy this one. It offers the kind of modern office spaces and apartments that beckon to the nicest companies and renters the city has. Ortega has also snatched up a $150 million piece of New York City architectural history. The Howout Building in Manhattan may not be the tallest building in the city, like Panorama, but it has its own unique feature. The five-story, 79-foot building in Soho was built by John P. Gaynor in 1857. 
Most notably, it provided the first functional elevator in New York City. So next time you don't have to use the stairs, this is the building to thank. While he doesn't have the nicest car collection I've ever seen, he still drives around in style. If Ortega is driving around, it's 100% gonna be in a Mercedes Benz. He's most commonly spotted in a luxury Benz S-Class worth $28,000 with a top speed of 130 miles per hour. On top of that, he has the Benz GL class, which will run you 58,000 for 131 miles per hour. I mean, I would have thrown in a Bugatti or a classic Ferrari if I had 80 bill, but that's just me. His tastes in yachts, though, are a lot more my speed. He owns a 67 meter super yacht that is an ocean of style and luxury despite the name Drizzle. It's an $80 million palace on the water from the classic exterior with contemporary finishes to the lavish interior designed by Redmond Whitley Dixon. He also owns a private jet because a yacht just isn't enough. Not only does he have one, but he's got a Gulfstream G650 that's worth $65 million. Once you see how sleek this baby is, those 65 mils make a lot more sense. So Ortega Ortega might not be as into fine paintings or private islands as some other billionaires are, but when he goes big, he goes big. Richard Branson is one of the most well-known billionaires in the United Kingdom with a worth of 3.9 billion. That's likely about to skyrocket though, literally. Now that he's launching commercial flights into space, he's probably gonna be racking up more billions over the next few years. Branson isn't the type of guy to be low key about anything. So it should be no surprise that lavish spending by his standards is a private island resort you could book right now. Necker Island is a gorgeous locale that is Branson's favorite getaway in the British Virgin Islands. He purchased the island for $180,000 in 1979 and spent $10 million transforming it into his own luxury paradise. The exact opposite of a luxury resort is his family home in Surrey Village. This is the epitome of a sleepy English country home. The $5.2 million four bedroom home sits on 1.4 acres of lovely farmland. It's kind of crazy to think that someone as wild as Branson ever lived in such a calm looking place. His London home in Holland Park was also a pretty sleepy location. This time it was a lot classier though. It is five stories high, has 12 bedrooms and a swimming pool. It was originally purchased for newcomers for Branson's company. The new staff would stay there for training. Then it became his family home for several years until it was sold for upwards of $70 million. It's interesting to see Branson's progression from a country home to a London estate to a full blown island. This is only a small part of Branson's vast real estate empire too. With so many quality homes, it's kind of surprising he's trying so hard to leave the earth behind. James Dyson really, really, really wanted to be Elon Musk. Seriously, he just had to trash the $700 million Dyson N526 electric car that was clearly aimed at Tesla Motors. Well, while Dyson is worth an impressive $9.4 billion, that is barely a drop in Musk's $261 billion bank account. Still, the billionaire who is famous for inventing the first bagless vacuum with cyclone technology still manages to spend with the best of them. James Dyson is an inventor and engineer whose formal training was in the arts. So naturally his home would be an artistic marvel with a unique architectural design. His $45 million Singapore bungalow is certainly one I haven't seen before. It hangs over a hill on several sides, features a winding pool, multiple waterfalls, gardens, and ponds. It also has an entertainment room, a massive wine cellar, a roof terrace, and two kitchens. Perhaps most impressive is the square footage. 21,108 square feet is quite a big deal in a place like Singapore. Even for foreigners to own land there, they have to have made exceptional economic contributions in Singapore. He recently relocated his headquarters to Singapore, so apparently that's what it takes to score some land there. Keep that in mind when you reinvent the vacuum cleaner. His other home is, well, the exact opposite of the modern masterpiece Singapore bungalow. In fact, it's the kind of estate that when you see pictures, you just assume the queen lives there or something. 
It turns out that the queen actually sleeps in a silly pink room that looks like it's out of the British Barbie dream house, and Mr. Vacuum Guy sleeps in a regal room fit for a king. I mean, this $20.1 million home is ridiculously, preposterously decadent. It has marble floors, regal British art of famous aristocrats on the walls, columns, enormous twin staircases, and enough outdoor space to land a few helicopters. I know, I know that we talk about a lot of crazy houses houses on here, but this one has its own church, walled kitchen garden, lakes, lodges, woodlands, and an orangery. Who owns an orangery? If that's not enough, the man also has proposed building a private art gallery on his land. The planned Doddington Art Gallery is supposed to be an enclosed space in their garden that will feature famous works of pop art for the public. It will also have sculpture gardens and what I assume are at least a few vacuums on display. He also likes to drop big bucks on innovation. His company plans to spend $3.6 billion over the next five years just testing new ideas. Hopefully they'll stumble upon the next big thing. They've got their sights set on robotics and machine learning now, but that's just what they're telling us about. I'm sure his own space company alongside Musk's is on its way. Surely they're gonna need vacuums on Mars, right? The richest woman in France is a pretty good title. The richest woman in Europe is even better, but the richest woman in the world is about as cool as it gets. All three belong to Francois Betancourt Myers. She is the chairwoman of the L'Oreal Company and an heiress worth $94.3 billion. So if you're the richest woman in the world, how do you spend like you're the richest woman in the world? Not the way that you'd think. As far as her decadent lifestyle goes, really the big ticket item is her home in one of the most exclusive Parisian neighborhoods. It's the kind of neighborhood where every one of your neighbors is rich and influential. She inherited this closed off piece of real estate when her mother passed away. That is quite the piece of inheritance. Wealthy billionaires in France sure do seem to be obsessed with one thing, restoring the Notre Dame Cathedral. The famous French monument went up in flames in 2019 to the horror of all the world. Plenty of France's wealthiest seem to take this pretty hard. Well, Myers is certainly no exception. She has donated roughly $226 million for the project. This highlights the deeper aspects of her personality that don't really mesh with the makeup heiress image most have of her. As far as hobbies go, she definitely doesn't have the interests that you'd think she would. While other billionaires are focused on innovations, car collections, and things of that nature, Myers is more interested in spiritual matters. She has authored several books on topics ranging from Greek mythology to Judaism and Catholicism. She isn't just interested in leading the world as one of the most successful businesswomen of all time. She wants to promote a world that's beautiful on the outside, but deep and thoughtful on the inside. Giorgio Armani is one of the most recognizable European billionaires in the world. That's largely because Armani is one of the best fashion brands ever made. This brand has brought Giorgio $7 billion as of 2021. So as one of the richest men in fashion, he's obviously gotta look like it in pretty much every aspect of his life. Spoiler alert, he more than lives up to expectations. Obviously, Armani is the kind of guy who would own luxury homes all over the world. Each of his homes are not only a place to live, but a work of art in and of themselves. His Milan home is probably the one that feels the most like him. He moved into the house in 1982 and claimed that he never wanted to leave it. Once you see inside, you see why. It's based basically a designer's fortress of solitude. Every wall is full of inspiring artwork. The interior design plan practically beckons for creativity. It has spiral staircases, a gorgeous home office, and a gorilla statue for some reason. A home like this goes for at least six mil. His multi-million dollar winter home in Switzerland, known as the Polar Bear House, is even more removed. It's a large estate with high ceilings, plenty of open space, and a dark brown color scheme. It is a place designed to escape and get away from everything. It practically beckons for you to drink a whiskey by the fireplace. Now let's look at his Caribbean manor in Antigua. The home is made up of pavilions and villas that are stacked on a cliff. He wanted to make sure the home had an open plan so that wind from the ocean could make its way all the way through the home. That way it would feel like living on an island all the way through the house. Major properties like this can go for over $600,000 
but I'm gonna bet this house is at least a few million. He's got the kind of super yacht that looks super even by super yacht standards. The $60 million ship named Maine was designed by Armani himself over a period of 30 months. The thing most notable about his yacht is its unique color scheme. Armani decided to give it a camouflage look. Ironically, that color scheme sets it apart from the other billionaire super yachts. It has a 65 meter hull that can house 12 people in its seven cabins in addition to hosting 14 crew members. It also has a cinema room, a gym, and a whirlpool. Once inside, you see that it looks exactly like what you'd expect Armani's yacht to look like. It is basically a museum of modern taste on the water. If Ridley Scott made a House of Armani movie instead, I'm pretty sure he would have broken 10 bill. Apparently the royal family is only worth 500 million dollars. Why do they have a Netflix series if they aren't even billionaires? 